Hello and welcome to Life is Magical podcast. I'm your host Sri Manju Katagada, intuitive healer, Akashic records reader, Hay House author of Connect Your Inner Guide book, and who believes in experiencing healing and life is magical. Through this show, I'll be sharing my toolbox, which is full of life hacks, tips for rainy days, ways to hold our connections with the inner guide, and much more fun things. Let us begin this journey. Hi, beautiful souls! Welcome to another episode, and here we are going to continue our conversation from the previous episode of Tools and Techniques to Raise Your Vibration. So good to see your responses and how you're connecting with it. And just to recap, if you haven't heard the previous version, uh, we talked about the energy and how it are the good vibes, the bad vibes, and how to recognize and how to shift them, and um, including the food, gratitude, setting the intentions in the morning, and how to raise our consciousness as we are beginning our day itself thinking from positive thoughts to um self love forgiveness the dance the mantras and how all these will be shifting in so in this episode i'm going to continue the conversation and share a few more tools that i have on my list that i have worked on them and would like to um share and see which one resonates with you further again as i said in the previous one they are very simple easy to be done and easy to be followed as well so one of them is um creating a sacred altar so sacred altar is um again a very simple ritual or a portal in your home in your desk on your desk or anywhere it can be as small as a uh, few inches to a whole room dedicated to it so sacred altar when i say that it's a beautiful space where you feel you belong you feel in alignment say my sacred altar in the room that i'm recording this podcast is uh, my temple there is all the gods and deities uh, where we pray um we do some mantra meditations and we chant we sing this is the sacred altar and right on my desk when i do the art i have a sacred altar as well within the room which has my candle and some crystals and incense and palo santo stick as simple as that so when i look at them it just makes me feel grounded i feel more relaxed and i feel there is something bigger than me reminding me and holding me together so that is the energies that i am tuning into at any time that i looked at the sacred altars so they are all around my home um in the kitchen in the bedroom in my meditation place uh, uh it just that's a beautiful reminders and you can have it something bigger than that like you can include deities angels saints or lots of crystals even like flowers again or you can have them in the garden as well with some rocks some um, and uh, closer to a fruit bearing plant um, fruit bearing plant or flowers it can be anything it's just a special place that means something to you and gives a value to you and move that sacred altar is something is where you will be moving around but yet you're locking your attention into those areas so that is a relation with your sacred altar and once you have it keep a journal so any thoughts come in you're going to note in your sacred altar and also once in a while do a energy cleanse of them so the energy doesn't get stagnant around them as well so that's one of the things so the next one is um, move your energy move your energy when i say that your body is a energy portal we do hold stagnants in our energy centers in our uh, joints uh, in our cells and everywhere so as you move 
bringing the flexibility or even like you know slight dance movements you are shifting the stagnant energies or go for a therapy like reiki energy or pranic healing these all make uh, or chakra clearance they make our uh, energies move if there is a stagnance the healer can identify and make that shift of it yeah so that is very important to check on there is a lot of um, use of gadgets now in the past years so emf frequency electromagnetic frequency is higher in most of us and we need to make sure that uh, we are maintaining a equilibrium and this is causing us to feel tired headaches and sluggish brain fogs so if you identify with yourself um, maybe get it checked uh, with a drowsing uh, kit or uh, another healer or practitioner might check that for you and you can get these crystals shagnite crystals that you can attach to your laptops your phones or have by bedside or your working table so these frequencies are not affecting deep inside you and you'll feel energetic here yeah. and what you can also do is once you're done with the work you can switch off all the gadgets plug out and this will help you to be grounded not feel that dizzy or brain fog or out of space kind of energies yeah and my favorite one is journal journaling helps us to raise our vibrations because you are releasing the clogged up thoughts the worries you are releasing um the anger or uh, anything that is not of inspirational or that is uh, causing a lot of pain you are releasing and when you release all you got is a good vibes and with that good vibes you are getting a good thoughts and also the frequency shifts uh, more wisdom comes in or your creative flow gets more easier and better so do watch that journal writing um i did start with julia's julia campbell's uh, artist way where she says you to do the morning pages as a homework uh once you wake up and uh, before even you attend anything you just need to sit and write 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 for four pages four a four pages and uh, i used to think like oh my god what will i have to write the first thing in the morning but i was surprised um, many days i was filling up the pages and some days of course i wasn't able to fill the pages but she said stay there and write the same alphabet maybe or a word but show up to it yeah i felt more lighter and a new thought started coming in because it was just emptying the all unwanted things yeah and some were very silly of course there's uh, no point in judging what we write because it's a um, only one way access yeah it's a one way drive um once you released it no point in reading and replanting it but at that moment that's a thought came in and you're writing it could be about your dreams you will write it could be about that uh, particular previous uh, weeks uh, thoughts or the previous nights thoughts you're writing or all of a sudden you remember when you were younger and you're writing those thoughts it's um, interesting where these thoughts come from and what they are sharing that message as well and uh, moving on to the next one um saying no and saying yes to you so when i say that it's like uh, pretty much like having your boundaries when you have your boundaries you are holding up your energy in a beautiful portal so you raise your vibrations and you hold that portal are uh, to be in together yeah and that's the most important thing and when you hold that beautiful space you are only inviting what's right for you it's like you are the owner of your home and you want to invite only the guests that you want to have a good time with of course you won't invite anyone randomly over the street and say to welcome and just try to entertain right so here you are taking in charge of yourself and um how important it is to address yourself itself that's the most important thing so here when you say no to others or situations or circumstances you're saying yes to yourself which is amazing which is uh, the intensity of who you are you're recognizing 
you're recognizing the beauty about you and honoring yourself. So don't be afraid. Start saying yes for yourself. That's the most important thing. You have always said yes for others, but now change it and say yes to yourself. I have a whole chapter about like boundaries, saying uh, no to it uh, uh, in my book. And also do listen to episode six, which is exclusively about the boundaries. So you'll get some tools of how to implement that. Spiritual protection. So as we turn up to our daily practices, spiritual protection is so important uh, that uh, that we need to work on and uh, we need to shield ourselves because you are becoming empath or you're a sensitive being. Any energies can so dysfunction you. So having a spiritual function of a protection, you are shielding yourself. You cleanse, you shield, and you say, hey, this is the energies I want to hold into. So you are very clear about it and this is your underlying statement. Isn't it amazing how you start building your self-love and um, giving a priority to yourself? And it's so needed and a must when we are growing, uh, when we are being um, raising our voice, doing our work. Uh, definitely that stronger portal to be. They're like a strength of a tree. Uh, when it's stronger, it can just hold up any amount of energies. So think about uh, what is your spiritual protection. For me, it's about um, I shield it by Archangel Michael, blue clock of protection. Or uh, I do it by a white light coming down from the source. Or visualize or a pink light around um, my head to toes like eggshell. So this can be your spiritual protection things. Yeah. And cleanse. Um, I love this idea about, like I just said, you know, protection is so important. Just you need to raise your vibrations by using a light. Visualize the light is clearing, releasing anything that's of stagnance. And then you are maintaining it. And then <clears throat> you're protecting your energies. Yeah. And by that, you're releasing any psychic clutter you're getting into. Being spiritual means so. Uh, also taking care of yourself there are so many energies that will try to mess with us or interfere with our frequencies all you can do is uh, you can set an intention again intention intention is a powerful portal and you can set like only the light to come in and you are taking in charge of that yeah and also repeat in your mind i move with flow and ease I move with flow and ease. I move with flow and ease. So this is like um, <clears throat> changing, reaffirming yourself and saying, hey, um, there is no place for the stagnance here. Everything is freely moving. If you have any other ideas, this is not the place. This is not the home for those things. Like, you know, you're making it uh, super clear with your affirmations and with your charging up. And so just repeat, I move with flow and ease. Or you can fill in with your own vocabulary or your own words. So there is something called the law of vibrations, which is about like, you know, the higher states of vibrations will help uh, you feel good, which means you can manifest more good things in your life. So manifestation happens when we are on a higher vibe, like you are asking um, universe to give you something or fill your uh, space with greater things. But for that, only you need to rise above. You can't be at a sulking place and ask and uh, yet you are received. Like, no, definitely no matter uh, how we feel shift around, placebo effect shift around, and say you feel good and I want more goodness in my life, you will see the miracles happening. Miracles do happen to people only when they are vibrating at that good space of energy. 
and you're attracting more and more of it yeah definitely like you know if you see a crowd of people um there is that a uh, high magnetic force around them that you see smiling laughing and a good chatter happening and that is a belt up of the force and when you are part of it you feel the same um uh, whereas if you see another group of people where they are just gossiping or um um messing with the minds or just talking about the past hurt and everything on going a uh, drama life and you'll feel like so tired so sluggish you just want to walk out of that room and that is what the vibrations are the more you feel good the more you want the goodness and it becomes very easy to what you bring in life so what are you waiting for like you know when you write down what your manifestations are or what your visions and goals are also remember to write these things down yeah and definitely that energy is contagious think about it the two scenarios that i said like a good laughter good vibe and there's other one where it's all the drama or um gossiping energy is happening which one are you attracted to and of course that is the contagious part yeah the more we want the lighter the more we want to live in that light as well and definitely choose to surround yourself with people who are vibrating in higher than you um we are inspired by someone or we are being having a role models of someone in our life which means we are looking upon to them and that is the thing that you are being drawn towards it and then what happens is people who are, who, who are at not at that frequency they'll be inspired by that frequency and move towards it yeah so as you do this work you are helping other people follow this work so it's so important to shift and move towards that higher path and here let me talk to you about the negative emotions um many people say that oh you need to not have the negative thoughts or you need to shift the negative thoughts but it is such a hard thing to shift or change until we understand what is it like you know how do we see it and how do we identify it so first thing is to identify what are your negative thoughts negative thoughts could be our limiting beliefs i'm not good enough i'm not having good relationship or i'm never can be happy there is never the good things come in like you know these are your negative patterns or negative thoughts i never have enough so these are the words that you have been heard through your mind through your family through your relationships and you feel that is the reality there and ask yourself ask yourself is that your true reality or is that something that you're making it up or uh, someone was projecting over to you was it their truth or is it really your truth and when you have those deep questions it will come clear that you were always worth it it was this insecurity of the other people has been projected onto you and you started believing that it was your fault for someone's unhappiness or it was your fault of uh, uh, not pulling it together like you know i was always told uh, it's me that the family is not together or there is a uh, issues in the family and i grew up thinking it's the same thing as my reality but when i started questioning there was no happiness even before i came in or there was no kind of uh, togetherness even before i came so how could it be my part only when you question back you will understand the answers are very much there but it is just that people are blaming or people are pushing to other ones yeah so definitely don't uh, take it easy take it um, deeper and understand it understand the depth where is it coming from and what is the input of the person there and ha- has anyone made it easy for you so all right okay let's say you know for a second you are the problem there but did anyone come forward and help you if they have identified you had a problem but they're only blaming you and shifting you into that dark space truly genuinely if someone is concerned caring for us they would not only identify but also they will help us to seek the answer so that is very clear isn't it 
I would never say something to anyone that would hurt them and not help them out of it. What's the point in making such a statement, right? And so think about it here. Yeah. And replace, now that you have identified where it has come from, you don't need to go back and dwell with those people or circumstances. All you can do is change your mind. And that is the most important thing. You replace those unworthiness things into worthy and say to yourself, I deserve the best in my life. I'm worthy. And just say those. And I know you will stammer. You won't feel comfortable saying these words because nobody has ever said that to you. But hey, I'm saying that to you. You are a beautiful soul. You are worthy. And you are a compassionate person. And you are unique. Remember, we are all unique beings here with a purpose. And that's the whole point. Like, you know, we are all having our own gifts. A lot of us say like, hey, what is the unique thing about you? Just being you is unique thing. There is nobody ever made like you or will ever be made like you. You in this time are unique. And that's the biggest gift. So own that and visualize that energy opening up. Say you are the best. It's not an ego. It's not an ego. It's not to be guilty. It is the truth that you are saying. You know, think about all the wonderful things that you have done and you have created. You helped so many different souls. Like, you know, if you haven't been on this spiritual journey, I'm sure you're not listening to this podcast. So if you are listening, you are doing the work. And here is what it is to that uh, part of your life. So watch out embrace that quality of you and move it further and that way you are setting your intentions to shift your thoughts when your thoughts are in such a high you are automatically raising your vibration this is your mantra this is your meditation this is the work that you're doing when you say and change the shift as saying i'm so proud of you to be here with you and you listening to me at this part, not switching off. And that's the most important part you need to remember. And you are grabbing all the best. You are manifesting everything in your life. And you deserve the best. Remember, you deserve the best. How does that feel? How does that feel? I feel so good connecting to your energies and feeling you are raising your vibrations and feeling that floatiness, feeling that shift, there could be some tears rolling down. That's perfectly okay. Those are welcome because they are releasing. They are heavy. They have been released. Now you are feeling lighter. Just imagine with me. Just imagine with me how beautiful soul you are. How unique you are. How light you are and how kind you are. Feel yourself floating above the place that you are in, above the earth that you are on, above everything else. How much of a freedom you got. You're feeling lighter and lighter as you do this. Feel that and breathe it all in. It's like a, your own protective shield. It's like your own warrior shield. It's your own internal strength that you're having. The Jedi, there is no one else outside, just within you. You tapping in within your own energies is what's making it unique. You're doing this work, you're listening to this, you're committing to this path is what is the strength that you have. If nothing else, this is your strength. I always say that in my workshops is if you are not committed, you wouldn't even be signing up for a healing workshop. You wouldn't even be taking that path, you know. You are meant to be doing it. You are meant to be awakening your own gifts and then awaken the other people's gifts around you. You are identifying your own soul. And this is what it is about raising your vibrations, doing the work, committing to it, showing up and consistently showing up. It's not one day work. It's not for one year work. It's an endless thing, like, you know, and it's that every day is a miraculous thing. Every day is bringing up a new hope, new new sunshine, new rays onto you. And that is where you are being charged up to move further. Raising your vibrations can also be done 
going for a walk to get grounded or getting a Reiki healing energy or doing something that makes you feel good, being of service to others, practicing yoga or doing some devotional work on your sacred altar. Anything that brings you joy will do wonders for raising your vibe. And ask yourself, what brings you the joy? What brings you that uh, special place of energy? And that is the most important thing, yeah. You need to tune in into that portal and working from there. Just one thing to ask yourself. Hey, who? What is that? What is that that you are joyful about? What is that you're committed about? And what is that you are feeling good about yourself? So connect to that part and work from there and let those miracles happen. And by listening to it, you already have raised your vibrations. That's the most important thing. And other ways you can do is by listening to TED Talks or podcast or Inside Timer, anything that inspires you, anything that inspires you is raising your vibration. Don't take it lighter. It is deep work. It is deep work and you are already doing it. So you are already changing the course. And when you do this course, when you do these actions, you are not only changing yourself, you're changing your family, you're changing it for your ancestors as well. You're doing the front and the back work. So it is amazing how the ripple effects go in all around. All the people surrounding you are being benefited. It's like a domino effect. So well done, brace yourself and uh, well done to yourself for being committed. How does that feel? Do you feel good? Do you get a lot of inspirations now? Do you feel you can do it? Yes, you can do it, remember. So if you have been inspired, if something has shifted for you, if you're going to practice one of the things, do let me know, comment, review, and like and share. Share with your friends who could benefit with it. Share in your soul tribe who can benefit with this. Yeah, I am absolutely going to love to be in connection with you to hear what is inspiring you or you're doing something that I haven't spoken about. I love to hear and I love to practice that. So do share it. Keep in touch. You know where you can find me. Um, there are the details on my show notes or on my bio. So please be in touch. Love to hear. And uh, thank you for listening in. Thank you for being here till the end. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for you. And I'm just going to end with Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Thank you guys. Thank you each one of you. Thank you all for listening in and tuning in to the podcast Life is Magical. I hope you found some good nuggets to move through this week. Want to ask a question? Please email me or stay connected if something resonated or found useful and helpful from this podcast. I love to hear back from you. My email is info at threemanju.com that is S-R-I-M-A-N-J-U, which is in the show notes below. Until next week, namaste and good day. Happy magic. Love to you all. Thank you for listening in.